Here at St. Mary's on the Fridays of Lent, we pray the Stations of the Cross. The traditional stations begin with Jesus is condemned to death. But there are some painful events for Jesus that came before his being condemned to die on the cross. In today's reading from the Gospel of John, at the Last Supper, Jesus talks about two of the most painful experiences for any human being, being betrayed and being denied by those closest to him. Few hurts cut as deep as betrayal. As human beings, we rely on each other for survival. The bonds of family and friends and community help ensure that our basic needs are met. To be betrayed by one of these feels like death. And for one of these to deny that a bond even existed feels much the same way. Unfortunately, the loss or damage of these essential bonds are all too common. Everyone is affected. We become diminished individually and communally. It doesn't take dramatic betrayals and denials like that of Judas or Peter. Anytime we undermine another person through gossip or dishonesty, we are all diminished and weakened. Anytime we are unfaithful or neglect to fulfill a sacred promise, we become less than who we really are. Anytime we give in to fear or shame or resentment and isolate ourselves emotionally or physically, the entire community is hurt by it. We are absolutely dependent on strong bonds with other people. So how is it that we find so many ways to break those bonds? The simple fact of our humanity means that we are subject to things like anger and frustration when our expectations are not met. We are prone to resentment when we are hurt and envy when others have what we believe we deserve. Fear of being rejected routinely distorts our view of reality and impacts our behavior. Fear of missing out on something better and good old-fashioned selfishness lead us to make poor choices. But we do not have to face these human tendencies alone, whether within ourselves or coming from others. Jesus shows us the way. At the Last Supper, Jesus knew he was about to be betrayed and that the one he had chosen to lead would fail him at the most critical time. He was honest and direct about the damage to the relationships, but he did not dwell on it. Instead, he reaffirmed his closeness to his followers, whom he called friends. In the Gospel of John, Jesus takes four entire chapters to describe that closeness and the exact nature of the bond that exists between Jesus and his friends. It begins with his relationship with the Father. And we are invited to be a part of that relationship when we choose to believe in him. Jesus promised his friends, including the weak-minded Peter, that their relationship would not be broken, but rather strengthened by his leaving. They would not be abandoned or alone because he will send the Holy Spirit. He promises that we will have the security of a permanent bond with him and his heavenly Father and with each other because his love is that powerful. His love, his power, and his joy have been given to us to share. Yes, being united with Christ also involves sharing, to some extent, his suffering. The loneliness, the hostility, 
and the rejection by others. But it also means complete victory over all that is evil and destructive. In Isaiah, God says to his suffering servant, I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. By his death, resurrection, and ascension, Christ's light and salvation has overcome all that could divide us. Betrayal, denial, fear, anger, envy, and every form of selfishness, and even death itself, will not prevail. All we need to do is stay united with and in Christ. Christ has given us every means and support to do that. We have his word and the scriptures. We have the sacraments, especially the sacrament of his body and blood. And we have been given to one another. No matter what happens, we are never alone. And that makes all the difference. <laughs>